All right, I've got up our new uh, container management uh, page where we're able to look at the different container environments that we have up and running. So, so far today, in my environment, I have both a Docker application and a Kubernetes cluster, and I'll walk everybody through how to add a new environment into this so that we can see what it actually takes and what's going on behind the scenes. So as a note that everything that I add already has to be a node inside of Orion. So I have already added a node in Orion where my Docker environment is running. And so I'll be adding that into that, our environment today. So is that node part of SAM? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, container monitoring today ships with both uh, server and application monitor and vman. Okay. And so if you have either of those products, you're able to come in and, and view your con or add container monitoring to your environment. So I have created uh, a special username and password within Orion that I'm using for my container monitoring, and that allows me to come in and select my server and easily get the script, which we're going to use to deploy container monitoring to this service. So here's the script that actually gets used to deploy the uh, Docker monitoring to my environment, and we are using containers to monitor containers. So what this does is it actually creates a set of containers in your environment to do the monitoring through. So I've copied that script to my clipboard. I come in here. So now we uh, run that script and we're able to then go and this is now downloading all of the latest containers that we need in order to do the monitoring. And so now you've seen it's gone and, and downloaded the different containers and now it will start communicating back to Orion. So we're actually being more of like an agent type of deployment where we've deployed containers to the server and they'll now talk back to Orion, pushing all of the container data to Orion. So what screen are you using here? Oh, I'm sorry, this is Solar Putty. This is a great new tool that we offer for free from SolarWinds and it allows you to SSH and do a variety of things into different environments. And as we get more Linux friendly, this is a useful tool for us to go in and look at our different environments. And You said amazing words just now, as we get more Linux friendly. I'm just going to bask in that. I, I didn't find those <laughs> words amazing. I just found them to be words. Yes. <laughs> so here you can see I, I can come in and run normal Docker commands, and this is through one of my favorite tools, Solar Putty. So that's just actually using Putty on the back end and we built on it? Correct, it's just a way for me to save uh, different configurations and easily have a tabular environment of different SSH windows. So I'm able oh, to then come in here, have multiple tabs open, and just be able to quickly uh, tab between different environments that I'm SSHing to in, uh, be in my favorite uh, command line land. <laughs> so let's go back to Orion. So now you see that I've added the new Docker environment that you saw me type in earlier. And mm -hmm. uh, it takes a couple minutes for us to gather all of the initial state information about the different uh, containers in that environment. And as that starts to come up, we'll see the containers start to appear inside of this Docker environment. I have set up a uh, fairly popular WordPress instance uh, with MySQL in the background. So when we get to the point where we're seeing the containers in here, we will see an actual deployment of uh, WordPress on this server. When containers spin up and when they die, um, how long is that data saved for? Does it go away immediately? But I, or is there value? I mean, I, I see value in keeping that information, saying, hey, it was spun up Saturday, it's Tuesday, but I can give you some historical context. Excellent question. So as we come in here and we look at a node details page, we've added a new summary resource for containers themselves that is searchable and we're able to look at all of the containers that are running in my environment, but also some of the containers that have been running in my environment over the past seven days. So the default answer to your question is seven days because a lot of times in container environments that are ephemeral, what's going on is containers are spinning up and spinning down and using resources, but you're not always watching it. Like nobody's sitting here staring at their no details page forever. But you might end up in a situation where you're, uh, running into problems and maybe it happened over the weekend or overnight when you weren't actually staring at your Orion page, but you want to be able to come in 
and see what was going on so you're able to look at a historical perspective and see what was going on, what was running when there was a problem, and what was actually uh, being utilized at that point in time. And I think also from a, from a DevOps perspective, um, because you do a lot of A-B testing, because as you have new versions of things, you roll them in and you simply spin up a single container, if something goes not even catastrophically wrong, if, if just there's you know bad performance or a bad reaction on the customer side and someone wants to go back and say, three days ago, we you know our sales dipped like that. What was going on? Oh, I can see that we rolled that beta code and then we immediately pulled it back again and we know which containers those were pushed out to. So we're able to go back historically and, and correlate those actions from the dev side and also from um, the, uh, effectively the operation side. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the beauties of our perf stack environment is that if you come into uh, the performance analysis piece of Orion, you're able to go in and look at your environments and see what happened historically. So here I have an environment that I have an application running on that has uh, the TCP port monitor and the response time to my actual server that's hosting my containerized environment. But then I also have CPU utilization for the different containers that have been running throughout the history of this deployment. And so I'd be able to trace back and see what containers were running and add them to the performance analysis and actually see the results of different points in time throughout history. We're also excited about having containers uh, available on maps. So uh, we're able to come in here and on a node details page, you have the, the mapping capabilities, but uh, containers are now authorized children of your nodes. So you're able to come in here and see containers on uh, the maps as well. And that way you're able to then drive out some uh, container environments where you want to have a map specific to a specific deployment and come in here and build up a map and see what you're able to do. And once again, if you know that certain sets, from what we were talking about before with mapping, now you can start to build out a real picture of that highly you know, elastic, highly available environment and say this is all of it. Yeah, because that's what I was going to say was, you know, I, I, from a systems admin point of view, I know these services make Exchange or BlackBerry or SQL a container. I don't know. So if I'm able to create that map and save it as Carlos Special Website or XYZ ER, you know, ERP server, I don't have to have the tribal knowledge then going back and going, well, how many containers do I need to look at? What were they right. called? Right there, it's grouped together. Exactly. So each container obviously has its own details page as well. And that gives us a lot of great information about the containers themselves. What command was used to start up that container, the different metrics, uh, details about the image and how, what's running and then all of the different environment variables that are going into running that container. So we get a fairly robust list of information about the container itself. And then, of course, looking at the container performance and our lovely app stack or mini stack telling us the, the container information and what server it's on. So all of this information just to give you that additional layer of data that you need for when you have containers, what's actually going on. And this is great information as a software developer that I would need to come in and look and say, all right, what's going on in the container? What command did you actually use to run it and see, do I need to change my configuration? Do I need to change my YAML file in order to make this run more efficiently? Now, will these containers, will this only monitor on-premises or on-premises and cloud containers? Uh, right now, our deployments are centered on servers that you own, so it doesn't really matter where the containers are deployed per se, as long as you have access to the server, like I was able to SSH into this server okay. and uh, deploy the containers that way. Now, if that was an EC2 instance, or if it's something local on my own private cloud, I'm able to do it that way. So it really doesn't matter where it is, as long as there's network availability and we can, we're able to talk back from that server to the Orion server, which you're able to do from uh, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, any of those are able to set up the right networking to get us back and you're able to then monitor containers wherever you have them deployed. So again, application is king when it comes to monitoring containers. And so when I have my specific deployment uh, out there and running, I am really concerned about container restarts. Again, containers is a new type of infrastructure that you need to monitor in a way that is different than the traditional uh, methodology. It's not just you're deploying it like a virtual machine that's going to live forever. These containers are servicing a 
application. And one of the side effects of that is a container can stop and need to be restarted. So we have orchestrators like Mesos, Kubernetes, Docker Swarm that are taking care of your containers as you've configured them. But when something happens, the orchestrators are programmed to go in and restart containers or do what's ever necessary to make sure that the health of your application is what you expect it to be. So restart count in my case is something that I really watch carefully in the specific environment. So containers are first class citizens within the Orion infrastructure. So alerts, reports, maps, app stack, perf stack, all of the wonderful features that you know and love with Orion containers are first class citizens and behaves uh, accordingly. So here I've created an alert for my container, looking at the restart count, and in my case, I'm looking for anything greater than fine five. My containers are fairly low restart counters, so that I don't get a lot of churn on them, so I'm just looking for like a slight bump, so just a little bit more than five, and that would make me worried that something's wrong with my configuration, perhaps. I just made a deployment of a container that keeps restarting, Maybe the environment variables aren't set up properly that that's not able to pull in the right information, or maybe it's got a dependency downstream that it, it keeps wanting to communicate to and it's just not able to find it. All right, so really what you see is with the alerts is that containers are a first class citizen. We're treating them as important things that you need to monitor within Orion. So alerts, reports, everything that you need with container monitoring. Mm -hmm.